So tonight's lecture is on commercialization, and we have Albert Baer who will be joining us. Uh, he uh, has gone on to build an international career at, in his own broadly recognized technology commercialization consulting business in Toronto, Baer & Associates. So it seems fitting that he's here today uh, speaking about the topics. So I'd like to introduce Albert. Thank you. You applaud now. Let's see if you think the same thing in about 45 minutes. Uh, I'm really happy to be here, guys. Uh, let's see now. How many times, Kyle, have we given this presentation? Four or five times, I guess, right? God, I got an echo here. Hello, hello, hello. Right? It's, it is in my head, right? I've got to turn down the hearing aid a little bit. Uh, I'm really happy to be here, guys. Like, I, I do this for a whole bunch of groups. I do this for universities. I do this for incubators. I do it for entrepreneurs all the time because I'm, I consider myself really lucky. You know, I'm, I wish I was your age still. I've, um, I'm a proud Canadian and I've lived around the world and I kept on coming home. I've moved home four times and I've had this really kind of unique life and the reason why I moved home last time, 20 years ago, is because like Dorothy said in Wizard of Oz, there's no place like home. This is, despite the fact we've got all kinds of screwed up things in this country, in my opinion it is, I really believe this is like we live in the best country in the world. And so I've had this, I mean that, I really do. But we got issues, we got issues and if we're going to be a leading edge country in the 21st century, then we better get our together when we compete against other countries. And I'm talking about countries like Sweden and Israel. I talk about Korea and Japan and Germany. And I talk about the countries in the world that are world leaders in commercialization. By the way, guys, we stink. We are amongst the world's worst. You know, according to the OECD, the Organization of Economic Development, you know, the G20, essentially, Canada ranked 19th out of 20 in terms of commercialization of technology. 19th out of 20. The 20th, by the way, was Australia. Australia, why? They're halfway around the world and they're half our population. But here we are, Canadians, living beside the world's largest economy, right beside the world's largest economy, right? They love us. They I lived in the States three times, right? They love us. They view us as the 51st state. We're the ones that are screwed up in the head. We're the only country on the planet that doesn't have to get fingerprinted crossing the border. The only one. Americans, when, if you're a Mexican, you come in, fingerprinted. Right, you're European, fingerprinted. Everywhere else, fingerprinted. Canadians are the only ones that are not fingerprinted. Yet we're afraid to cross the border. The theory, the conversation I'm gonna have with you today, this presentation which I gave, I've given I don't know how many times at this point. I probably started writing this presentation 10 plus years ago. I started doing it at universities, for MBAs, for undergrads, for engineers, to say this is my experience in the life and here's what I've learned how, they, how the other guys do it. And this is how we adopt it as Canadians and how we try to become successful so we don't have another RIM disaster on our hands, another Nortel disaster or Bombardier. Canadians are very good at building technology in the early stage. And what happens if you look at over a period of 20 or 30 years, we stink. We have no longevity. None. None. Right? The reason why I'm here is to teach you what I've learned and hopefully you can apply this to your own lessons. So this is gonna, I'm going to talk about technology. So some of the stuff's going to be very relevant to what we're just going to talk about. But it can be applied to anything. We can be talking about tables. I don't really care. The message that you're going to, the one walk away from this presentation, the only walk away, if anything, from this presentation is the most fundamental rule that I've learned after living in Japan and living in Silicon Valley and living in Seattle Redmond and living in Europe. Never, ever confuse where you live with where you make your money. Canadians are the worst at this. We come up with a great idea. Kyle, you'll be screwing around with some product here in Sudbury for 10 years, thinking that if I can just get someone interested in the product, maybe what I'll do is I'll take it to the United States once I think I've made, I think I've made traction. That's complete. OK, so I'm on live YouTube. That's complete. OK, it is absolutely the loser's game. Let me tell you what happens if you're in Israel, or if you're in Sweden, or if you're in Korea, or Japan, or the United States. When you build a product, the first thing you do, the very first thing you do, is you hightail it to the United States immediately. They have more than 10 times the population of us, but they move tremendously fast where Canadians don't. I got a question for you. How many shoppers drug marts do you think we have in Canada? Take a stab. Class participation, come on, guys. Six, 60? 60,000. 60, Let's try again. 1,400. We have 1,400 shoppers in the country. Okay, now, we'll now we go around to the states. One in Niagara Falls. Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid. That's their shoppers, right? 
you would figure if there's 1,400 shoppers, there should be like a 10 to 1 ratio, there'd be 14,000 pharmacies, for argument's sake. 65,000. 65 to 1 ratio, not 10 to 1 ratio. So let's talk about movies. Let's talk about how to be successful. I would argue very strongly that Canadians, small population, fabulous place to live, great place to have a family, we're, we, we're really nowhere on the world stage, with the exception of two things. We crank out tremendous musicians, don't we? And we've done this for 30 years. From the guess who, now you got Bieber, now you know you had Celine Dion a few years before that, you had Shania Twain, we crank them out, guys. Okay, let's talk, let's talk about movies and comedians. We completely overpunch our weight in terms of comedians. Think about Second City, think about John Candy, think about Howie Mandel, go one by one by one by one. We overpunch our weight as a small population of 35 million people in music and in comedy. Why? Why? Because they never confuse where they live with where they make their money. Shania Twain, smoking hot, right? If she would have stayed up in North Bay or wherever the hell she was, she would have, Timmons, she would have been there forever. But someone said, wow, she can sing and look at her. Let's take her to Vegas. Get her on stage. All of a sudden she becomes a superstar, which means you're a superstar in Canada. Canadian superstars are not made from Canada. Canadian superstars go somewhere around the world. Somebody goes, wow, they're really kind of good. And then they become a superstar here. Canadians penalize Canadians. Americans give Canadians a chance every day of the week. Never confuse where you live with where you make your money. The market is much bigger there. They move far faster than we do. Message to you, most important lesson, never, ever, ever count on Canada to make your living. If you do, I'm telling you something, you'll die. I've had thousands of clients at this point, thousands, thousands of Canadian clients. The, va the number one reason why they fail is they spent three, four, five years trying to figure out what the hell they're gonna do in Canada. Try and get some IRAP money or shred money or develop some prototype or not do patents or do Canadian patents and wasting their time in Canada. If you cross the border, they write checks. Americans, there's all kinds of problems with Americans. Americans write checks though. Canadians study. We're risk averse. Internalize these lessons, guys. I've lived it. This presentation is how to compare, is how to can succeed on the world stage. Okay, so let's talk about Switzerland. Okay, quick, name some Swiss companies, products. Now, go. Come on, name one. Good, let's go, let's keep going. Look at this, cranking it all out. Nestle, the world's largest food company. Swatch watches, Ikea Sweden, wrong S, right? Landlocked country, no natural resources. For half of the 20th century, they had enemies around them. World War I and World War II, they stayed independent. Nothing, no natural resources. Yet we just cranked off Nestle and Swatch watches and banks and Victoria, Victoria, um, uh, Victoria Knox wa uh, knives and this and that and all. Little country with the GDP of the city of Toronto. Three million people, four million people. Yet they can become world companies and here we are beside the world's largest economy when we're their friends and we don't have any companies. Name one world-class Canadian company in any industry. Let's go, name one. If you say Bombardier, I'm gonna slap you upside the head with a fish. <laughs> a world-class aeronautics company is called, is called Boeing or Airbus. Not friggin' Bombardier, that's like Embraer, it's the shitty little planes, not the good planes. What do we have to show for it? We spent billions of dollars, guys. Billions of dollars of your money, government money, and what do we have to show for it? Nada. We have nothing to show for it. You have Wim go up and down. You have Nortel go up and down. We have nothing to show for it. Yet how many billions of dollars we invested? And we're the most educated country on the planet. We have a 51% university education rate. For a population of north of 30 million people, that's amazing. 51% university education rate, beside the world's largest economy, they like us, we're super smart, we stink. Shame on us. Shame on us. We didn't learn from the musicians. We didn't learn from the comedians. They got it nailed. Go to the States, is the message. What do we have to show? Nothing. Principles for any Canadian technology company. Time to get real. Don't believe your It's not about how wonderful you are or how amazing your technology is. If it was about amazing technology, then Beta would have won against VHS. Beta got that 
VHS licensed it to everyone. Sony said, no, I'm going to own it. How many, I got a Mac. How many Macs are there? 7% of the market, even today. Windows still rules it. Why? Because they license it. They get far and wide. They don't confuse where they live with where they make their money. It's just as easy for you to go reach out. How many kilometers are we from Toronto? 400, 300, 400 kilometers. How many kilometers are we from the American border? Okay, how far are we from Detroit? Oh, well, down near the same. Why are you wasting your time with friggin' Toronto? Who cares about Toronto? We're just, an, it's another Sudbury. It's another moose jaw. We're in Canada, guys. <laughs> it doesn't matter about us. They don't care about us. That's why no one's attacking us. We are nice people that no one gives a Be honest. Get real about what we're doing. Take your product, take your innovation, high tailor to the biggest products, the biggest markets in the world. And here's the most amazing thing. Canadians are really good. We're respected, they like us. Play to our strengths. We're nice people, they like us. We're culturally sensitive. We respect people, they like us. I can argue a lot about Americans. Most people don't like Americans right now. It's true, get real, I'm not joking, I am dead serious. So to bring stuff around the world from Canada, is respected. But if you sit in here and no one knows about you in the first place, you're done. Get out there, do the Shania Twain thing, do the Celine Dion thing. Get out of the States and then sing. Don't sing on Canadian Idol, sing on friggin' American Idol because if they say yes, you've transformed overnight. Overnight. If I land Shoppers Drug Mart in Canada for whatever I'm gonna sell, I gotta go find another customer right after. We go, that's great, we just got a deal, we made some money, yay, right? Gotta find another freaking customer. That's not the case in the States. You get one of those customers, they've made your company. They've funded your company, they hand you five or $10 million purchase orders with American dollars, not Canadian pesos. They accelerate, they write checks, guys. It's not about raising capital. It's not about talking to angels, it's not about shreds or IRAPs or kissing Try and muddle along and live the next day. Revenue, revenue, revenue. Period. Not Canadian revenue. They love us. We're respected. But if they don't know what the hell you have, then it doesn't matter. Basic principles. Time to get real. Right? It's a chance for you to step back now. Now we're not going to think about the issues that you have. How do I go and do whatever the issues are of my product? How do I get it certified? How do I go and get it tested here? I'm not talking about any of the tactics. I'm trying to get us above the noise right now. I don't care what you've built. In most, tech, in most companies nowadays, there's almost always an element of technology now. There really is. We could be in the agriculture business I'm doing. There's all kinds of technology in that. There's technology in everything. But if you don't understand where we fit in the universe, you will fail. Period. We cannot do this on our own, guys. We have, this, we have the world's 16th largest economy. 16th. Living right next door to the world's number one economy. And we're afraid to cross the border. But the Israelis, if we're sitting in, in Tel Aviv, or we're sitting in Jerusalem, and we got Technion University as opposed to Laurentian University, they build something, they immediately go to the States. And they become world companies. That's what Switzerland did. If, they, if the Swiss had to count on doing something from Switzerland for the Swiss, they'd be servicing five, four million people. But yet Nestle comes from Switzerland? You have to play to your strengths. We're great at science. We build great scientists in this country across all the sciences. We're clever people. We have learned by necessity of doing things when we have no money whatsoever. The Americans have lots of money. They throw, they, they, they throw money at stuff. We don't. We got to come up with clever ideas because we don't have money. Play to your strength, not to your weakness. We don't have the ability to be able to go run a worldwide company here. We don't. But we can take our technology and take it to the biggest companies on the planet and we both succeed together. So if you've got some great technology for a new catalytic converter, then take it to friggin General Motors in Detroit, not goddamn Windsor. Because Windsor reports to Detroit. If you come up with the latest smart grid thing, let's go talk to General Electric, not GE Canada. By the way, GE's world headquarters for smart grid is in Toronto, Canada. Why? Because we're in generation three of smart grid and the rest of the world's just moving to generation one. 
were good in science. We're very good in the early days. For the first two or three or four years of any industry, innovation is key. We're really good at this guys. We really are. But you start getting four, five, six, ten years into an industry, we die every time. Because we think we have to stand up here in Canada. Wrong answer. Everything has a life cycle. Okay, so I got my iPhone 6 here. Someone asked me, am I going to get my new iPhone 7? It's like, are you out of your mind? It's the same freaking phone. But I'm going to buy an iPhone 8 next year. Why? Because this will be an old phone then. And, it's, and, and when my friends start laughing at me because I have an old device, then it's time to shift. Everything generally has a three to five year cycle. Sometimes it's a little bit longer, sometimes it's a little bit shorter. Think about it. Cars, four year leases, right? Everything which is new becomes old in three to four years, especially in technology. So if you think you're hot today, and if you haven't gone and got a, if you haven't gone and penetrated the worldwide market, which I'll explain to you how you do it, if you haven't penetrated that market in the first 18 to 20 months maximum of getting your ass out of this goddamn country and talking to someone that matters in a Germany, in a Japan, in the United States, notice I didn't say Canada, not Canada. If you don't reach out and do something with one of those big companies, it doesn't matter how wonderful your technology is. It doesn't matter. Because someone who has other technology, which may not even be as good, will go and do the deal with one of those companies. And by the time you decide that it's time for me to cross the border because I think I'm ready, because I made my first half million Canadian pesos revenue, which is good, right? It's already done. Okay. Once someone's done a licensing deal, done a strategic partnership, done an acquisition, it's done. Period. End of story. By the way, if there's questions, please chime in here. Like, I'm not, like, please, like, class participation, right? If you believe your own shit, oh, I'm wonderful. They're going to come to me. I'm afraid they're going to rip me off. I've been running my business for 18 years now in Canada. Once I came home, I started this commercialization practice. I don't want to country that does this. I have now had a thousand clients in Canada. I have never once been stolen IP. Never once. So you think your technology is better than someone's going to rip you off? Friggin' get over yourself. You're out of your minds. You're dead wrong. No one is interested in stealing your technology. No one. They want to make money. Americans like making money. They're capitalists. They're the supreme capitalists. So if I can bring something cool to a big honking partner where they can get to market in 6 to 12 months, and if they need to pay me a little bit of royalties on the backside, and I get to market in 6 to 12 months, and you're not a keep talking. I was a general manager in these companies, guys. The only Canadian that was ever doing this. Right? And if you can come to me and say, I can help accelerate your revenue for the year, and, I, and instead of doing it, getting out in three, four years, your piece of crap in four years, I can get something out which is best to breed in a year, and I have to pay a little bit of royalties or a little bit of little commission? No brainer. No brainer. It's about revenue. Revenue talks, it walks. It's not about the superior science, guys. It's not. Get to market, get to market first. If you're greedy, I'm telling you something, every person I know who's, who's played this game, who got greedy, who decided they're worth more than what they think they are, has failed 100% of the time. 100%. So for the older people in the room, who remembers WinFax? Remember WinFax from Windows 95? You guys, one person, that's great. We sold our company, we sold, right from day one, we knew we were gonna drive Microsoft and Symantec crazy. We were at Don Mills and Eglinton, right across from the Ontario Science Center. We started off a company from nothing. We grew and we sold the company for 600 million US dollars, which is how I ended up in Silicon Valley. Why? Because from day one, we knew we were going to piss them off. I could care less about Canada. I happened to live in Canada. By the way, we went from zero to 700 employees at Don Mills and Egg. Real jobs, not bull jobs like someone working at Enterprise Rent a Car, like real jobs for young people and old people. And then we antagonized them into buying us. And then, and then after they bought us, we tripled the staff in Canada because we're really good at what we do. Tripled the staff. So we didn't sell out and then lose the Canadian company. We tripled the staff. But because right from day one, we knew who our targets were. Always about the states. Why am I giving you this chat? So I've been doing this for a long time. I got fed up working for these actual crazy people 20 years ago. You know, I got him from Winnipeg, one race escaped, I got an MBA a trillion years ago in high-tech marketing, finance, and drinking. And um, came back, and people like me, they turned to product managers. Yeah, I was the first, clearly I'm not Japanese, I worked for a Japanese company. The first thing they did is they shipped me to Tokyo, and I ran worldwide operations for Fujitsu. My wife's not Japanese, she looks like you. 
right? I'm not Japanese, right? I didn't speak a word of Japanese when I got there, but I know how to commercialize. I know how to take technology and how to make it world stage product. The most important thing is get it out of the barn. Immediately get it out of the freaking barn. It doesn't matter what you think. It matters what the other people think. And it doesn't matter about Canada. Never forget that we have the GDP of Italy. Italy's known for hot cars and hot women and great alcohol, and great wine, but they're not a world power when it comes to coming to technology. We're no different. Get over ourselves. So what do we do? We have friends everywhere. I'm Team Canada. I'm under contract with the NRC, if you know NRC here in Canada. I'm, in co I'm under contract with the German federal government. I'm, out, I'm off to the German government in three days because I'm taking German technology through Canada into the States now. We got crazy friends everywhere. Everywhere. And that's a really, really small subsection. I put a, I put a couple Canadian flags up there simply because those guys have paid some of my money and because Suncor is the biggest country, company in the country. We have no Canadian companies. They're all sales offices. But so what I do is we find interesting technology across all the sciences, life science, animal science, IT, clean tech, nanomaterials, material science. Take your cool shit and take it to those companies. You need to fund your business. They got more money than God. For them to write a check for a million or two million dollars, which is an enormous amount of money for you to run your business, for them, it's like you and me buying one McNugget, Kyle, at McDonald's. It's nothing. Engineers cost me $200,000 US a person. So for me to write a check for a million or two million dollars to test something in the marketplace to see if it takes is a complete no-brainer on their part. And we've just completely disintermediated the whole issue about trying to raise capital. Oh, I'd love to do this, but I'm by myself. I need to go raise 50,000 or 100,000. No, you don't. You get a purchase order from one of these guys. And they'll listen to you. But if they don't know who you are in the first place, it doesn't friggin' matter. My job, what I do is I take Canadian innovations around from wherever they are and take it down to the companies that matter. Not blank, blank Canada Inc. The company, not a friggin' sales office in a B team country. Sorry for being harsh, it's real. Proud Canadian, moved home three times, five times. Gotta get real, right? No, we're good at it. We're really good at engineering. We're tremendously good. We are world-class engineers. When I was living in Redmond, Microsoft, Gates would go, Gates was my boss. Every year, he'd go flying out to Waterloo to sell them the life of living in Redmond, which by the way, is a fabulous place to live. It's, 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 it's better than Vancouver, in my opinion. Remember, I'm a Western Canadian, right? Fabulous place to live. You notice they hired all the engineers. They went after all the comp sci students, never hired a business student. Business student, Canada, pff, come on. <laughs> Give me a break. I'm going to go hire someone from Stanford or Harvard or something, a real university, not this friggin'. I and by the way, I teach at three universities. I'm a professor at Western. I teach PhD engineering. I teach at Ivy and I teach at University of Manitoba. MBAs. They never hired any Canadian business people. Give me a friggin' break. Running joke. And Canadian engineers, every time. If we play our old game of going and trying to do exactly what we've been doing, what we, yeah. I got my undergrad at University of Manitoba in Winnipeg. I got a scholarship. I went down to Fargo, North Dakota, and Minneapolis. So I went to University of Minnesota, and I went to North Dakota State University. At that point, I wasn't moving back to Winnipeg. No, hell, not a chance. And it was a choice, like what you do as a Western Canadian. You either move to Vancouver to party, or you go to Toronto for business. What did you like better? What did I like better? Yeah, like education in the States. Or oh, education in the States was way more fun. We got, oh my God, <laughs> whereas here's more British like system, right? But, but I started learning the American way, right? And then at the time we didn't have NAFTA yet. And so they basically they kicked me out of the country. So after the American government paid for my full education in the States, full scholarship, and they said, great, fuck out. <laughs> and I said, but, but I'm a Canadian, I'm a Canadian. They go, no, you're not, you're a foreigner, get out. Who well, give me a one year visa at the time. I said, like, I'm not moving to Silicon Valley for one year. So I moved to Toronto. And then three months later, I found my future wife, 30 years later, and then we started doing this odyssey, living around the world. And, kept, and every time we'd go away, we'd come back. We'd go, we'd come back. And then finally, 20 years ago, after we had our two kids, we, my wife said, enough of this high-tech army brat crap. And then I, and I realized that we have a tremendous opportunity here. Find, and it started in IT. IT, hardware, software, security, fax software, whatever, right? But then take it to the big companies. And if they like it, then just give me, a, give me a purchase order. And if you really like it, and you don't want me to Google, you don't want me to go and do it with Microsoft, fine, then you know that purchase order I'm asking for? Triple it. 
So I'm asking for $3 million, I'll make it $5 million, $6 million, $8 million. It's no money for them. It's nothing for them. It really isn't. And then I've just funded my business with zero, zero dilution. No angels, no shreds, none of this crap. I mean, that's, that's, and what happens is when you build a product, you know from day one the customer's going to take it. Day one. So you just lost me. If they're writing a check for $10 million. Yes. Typically five, but okay, yes, five. to start. But they're not wanting a chunk of your company, like no. 10% of your company? No, not interested. Not interested. If they're interested in your company, they don't give a shit about that. What they're interested in, what, what <laughs> happens is they want to test the product in the market. So I've come up with the latest, greatest this, right? And I decide that I want to take this to Lo Targus, or I decide I can take this to Logitech. Remember, the biggest companies on the planet, everything's an oligopoly. Every industry that you're in, there's only four or five companies that matter. Period. And all the B team guys you just ignore. The biggest companies on the planet trying to get real. You go there and say, I want to do a licensing deal. They'll do a deal all the time if they like it, if it helps accelerate their roadmap. They have zero interest in buying an equity component in your company. If it starts taking off in the marketplace, it starts selling. What happens after four or six quarters, the CFO gets fed up with writing royalty checks. Then you're going to get a knock on the door and they're going to buy your ass. Then they just go from not owning anything to buying you outright. Flat out. And they'll write you a check for 50 to 100 million dollars. But you haven't diluted yourself at all. So they go from test the market. They have no problems going and test marketing it. I got one going on right here in town, Activated White. We, launched, we did an OEM deal with Permatex, right? Where's, where's Dennis? He's not even here tonight, right? So I got a client here. We did exactly, he built some technology. Jake's been dicking around with this stuff for what? For what? Six, seven years, eight years, forever? More than that. More than that. Sitting here, screwing around for 10 years with the stuff, right? We take it to, a, in, 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 one of the use cases is hand washing. So in the States, there's only two companies that matter for hand washing. One is called Gojo, which is Purell, which is Johnson & Johnson. And the other one is this company called Permatex, been around from 1900. Take it to them, they respond in a few hours, they love it, get an MOU done, get a contract done, get a purchase order done, the product, gets, the product starts launching in the United States in the next few months. But we haven't diluted ourselves at all. And if it really takes off, if it really becomes big, they're not going to keep writing royalty checks because it's escalating. They won't write that royalty check forever. Then they'll finally turn after four or six quarters and say, just buy these assholes. I'm serious. That's how it's done. And they don't buy you for hundreds of millions of dollars. They'll write you a check for $50 million. But I would argue if you and I have a small company, and generally they're partners, if you and I own 80% of the company and some of our staff owns some of the company, and someone comes knocking at the door and they're saying, here's 30 to $50 million. I've transformed not only your life and your children's life and your grandchildren's life, as long as they're not screw-ups, we've paid off everyone's mortgage. From the youngest person to the oldest person. Mortgage paid. You know what you can do to a young person? You always, and they walk out and they, their school's paid and their education is paid and, they, and you pay for their house? We just transformed this young person's life. And even the older people like us, we've just taken care of our retirement. We've taken care of our children and grandchildren. Who gets screwed in this model? The VCs get screwed in the model. But I would argue strongly the VCs have done a job in this country. How many VCs have been around for the last 10 years? Yeah? Can we go back to the last slide? I don't know if I can because this is a Windows machine. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to work for Microsoft and I can't stand Windows anymore. All right. Can I take a picture? Sure. Okay. That's a small part. Like that's a really, 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 really small sample. I arrogantly believe that there is not a major technology company, any company on the planet, I can't get someone to come back to me within 24 hours. That's an arrogant statement, completely true. I do it day after day after day. How do you think we did the dentist stuff? Find out, who the, find out who's the idea. You close your eyes, it's, it's, I describe it as Martin Luther King. I have a dream. I describe it as Walt Disney, Imagineering, which is where, Walt, where Disney World came from, Disneyland came from, right? Okay, so I've got this thing here. Who are the top two or three biggest companies on the planet? Let's go reach out to them. You guys, for the younger people, you have these things which we didn't have on us old farts. You have this thing called the internet. Your life is a billion times easier than the old days, pal. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. If I want to type in VP, product management, or managing director of LinkedIn, enter on Google, the person's name comes up. Okay, you got the person's name. It's a human being. It's a human being. Send them an email. Send them a LinkedIn email. Hi, I'm in Canada. I got this really cool sh I think you can sell more of your stuff by using my stuff. Can we talk? I'm describing exactly what we did with Dennis. Guy comes back four, four hours later. Amazing. People say, you can't do that. 
Why can't I do it? The other countries do it. How do you think they do it? You come up with this greatest, latest, new whatever, right? Take it to friggin' Apple. What, are you going to go screw around here for years? I've come up with the latest, greatest new app. I've come up with the latest, greatest new lithium-ion battery. I've come up with the latest, greatest new headsets. Okay, we're going to go talk to these guys. They're human beings. Stop being such a Canadian wimp. You think I'm kidding. That's what kills us every time. Because we're really good, but no one knows about us. It's really sad. It's very depressing. That's why I give these presentations. It really pisses me off that I was the only freaking Canadian in all these companies. Always. Outrageous. Yet we're so educated and we're so liked and we're really good at this shit. Take it to the big company. They won't steal from you. They will happily, happily always give you 15 minutes of your time because they like Canadians and they're going to listen to you. You're not being obnoxious. You're showing respect. I got something cool. I think GE, you can do something with this. You got something cool. Canon, I think you can do something with this. 30 seconds online on LinkedIn will get that for you. And it doesn't have to have a brand name like Albert. Anyone can do this. Because there's people, that's what their jobs are. I was corporate development for a big honk and high tech company in Silicon Valley. My job was to find stuff external and bring it into the mothership. What if I told you that 85% of products that you see that come out every year, 85% are not, even though it has the name General Mills on it, or Nestle, or whatever. Do you think they developed that? Absolutely dead wrong. 85% of products come from external that they put their label on, and if they like it, they buy them. It's all about M&A in the States. So reach out to them but not the engineers, the person who's the managing director. Reach out to the president. Grow something. Go reach out to them. You'd be amazed they come back to you. This is what I teach the students, by the way. This, is this thing here turned into a full MBA class and a full PhD class, teaching them to grow a pair and just friggin' go and reach out to them. And 50% of the time they come back to you. We're doing the musician's game. We're doing the Canadian comedian's game. That's the game to play, because now they've heard of you. They'll read your deck. They'll read a 15-slide PowerPoint in a heartbeat. Because that was my friggin' job. I'm bonus and compensated on that. If I don't bring companies in, they don't get new products out the door. 20%, every company, generally speaking, they have a rule of 20%. 20% of the bad products, gone. New products every year. 20%. You just want to be part of that mix. And that's where Canadians miss. You don't, it's not about raising money. It's dead wrong, raising money. Oh, if I just have more money, I can hire three, four more engineers, and I can get my prototype done, and I can go, and I can go test it in the mines down where in Valet or whatever, whatever. And then when it's good, maybe what I'll do is maybe when I, I grow up someday, maybe I'll go take it somewhere else. Wrong friggin' answer. Dead wrong. And I'm probably the most qualified in the country to say that. Wrong, wrong call. It's not about raising money. It's about protecting your IP. Take your IP, do a provisional patent. By the way, Canadian patents are worthless on the world stage. If you have a nominal value of a patent called a US patent, which is the gold standard, let's say it's worth a million bucks. A PCT, which is the European version of that, if normal, American patent's worth a million, for argument's sake, a European patent, let's say, is worth about $200,000, how much do you think a Canadian CFL patent is worth? Zero. Zero value for Canadian patent. Same cost, same time frame. American patents move faster than Canadian patents. Canadian lawyers in Toronto will file US patents just as happily as, US, as Canadian patents. US patents have value. US patents, I'm just spending a couple thousand dollars, guys. I'm not saying spend $50,000, I'm saying spend a couple thousand dollars. File your provisional US patents. If you don't do it, they won't take you seriously. That's where your friend has failed. But that doesn't mean that the game's over. It means if they haven't been able to do it, there's always more stuff coming forward. You can always patent ahead. You can't patent backwards. If you don't protect your IP, they're not going to give a shit about you. It's lipstick. I understand that. They don't even know if the patent holds water. It's not about if it's issued patent. It means that you've shown that you're serious enough, that you've shown respect to your own innovation to say, you know what? I've spent 500 bucks and I've gone and I've done legal Zoom. $500. $500. Less than an airfare to New York City. I've gone and i filed. They don't even ask what your patents are. They go, okay, fine, you filed a provisional patent, good, keep going. But if I say, well, tell me about, and this is, this is what we had to do with, with, with Activate Awake, because it was all trade secret, because Jake didn't want to go and disclose the stuff on the patents. 
Guess what? They're patenting now. <laughs> Still trade secret and patents. Yep. You must do this, period. It's, you're noted by your absence rather than your presence. And if you don't partner and partner and partner and partner, I will guarantee you're going to fail. You may have a nice little business, you may have a little cottage business up here. You ain't going to make it. Because nature doesn't, doesn't play well. If you think about the automobile business, the automobile business started off, there was hundreds of vendors. Okay, so the automobile business has been around for 120 years now, 100 years. Same six companies exist. Daimler, BMW, Volkswagen, Mitsubishi. Same freaking companies. Maybe one buys the other one. Maybe Fiat buys Chrysler or whatever. Same companies, because once that oligopoly is set, it's done. So you are not going to be able to take those guys on. But if you can help those big guys, keep talking. End of story. And it's all about the partners. It's not about you trying to grow your business because you're not capable of growing your business from Sudbury. Get over yourself. You're not capable of doing this. By the way, same thing in Toronto. So you think, oh, Toronto's the answer. Well, let's take it down to Toronto. Bullshit. Same Canadian loserville. Wasting your time. Wasting your time feeling good about it. Right to the States right to Europe. Notice I haven't talked about Asia. I lived in Asia. I was the Winnipegger in Asia. The only Canadian working for Fujitsu, right? Let me tell you something, and I lived there. Three years living in Asia, learning how to speak Japanese and drink and swear. Let me tell you something, it's too friggin' hard to do to work. Forget about intellectual property theft. It's too hard to work in Asia. It's way easier to go 100 kilometers from here, 400 kilometers from here. It's way easier. We speak the same language, we're in the same time zone. And America and Europe still leads the world, whether you like it or not. I don't do deals with China. I can, but I won't. Because I'm, there I'm concerned about intellectual property theft, and I'm also concerned about the difficulty of trying to just deal with the cultural divide. Remember, I was a white guy living in Asia for a Japanese company. I can say that. I'm qualified to say that. U.S. partners. If you, here's my here's a simple metric number one, is if you can go and get one partner per year for three years, so three partners. It's not a huge task. Take one body, your job is you will bring home a big partner. You're going to bring home a Logitech or an HP or a cement company or whatever. One a year. You do that for three years, I will virtually guarantee you're going to have a positive exit. And a positive exit where you still own your company and where you're walking away and you can make yourself with serious seven figures. Stick to your knitting. Don't boil the ocean. Stick to these guys because if you can get one of those guys to light up and they start selling your product, the conversation we had with one client that we know very well, they first said, okay, let's, what would it take to make 50,000 barrel buckets of this stuff when they're doing a bucket at a time, right? So we get a call two months ago, three months ago, and they said, what would it take for you to make 800,000 buckets? <laughs> uh, well, Jake already lost his hair, so we don't have to worry about him losing any more hair. But it's like, we didn't do that. What happened was they're talking to their clients, and they were starting off with 50,000 doing it in Florida, and obviously they were talking to like a Home Depot or something and they're saying, okay, so, you know, what would it take to do 800,000? That's a purchase order of like 30, 40 million dollars. Yeah, five minutes left, you gotta be sh yikes. We'll stay. Okay, um, okay, fine. Let's talk about the, the, what a typical company looks like here in Canada, right? Lots of small companies. I'd be really nice to say it's a million to five million. Most of them are around a couple hundred thousand bucks at best. They're starving to death. They're slowly bleeding out. And typically these companies start off with two partners. And what happens is one of them generally has to leave because they need to make money. And they have kids or they're married or something like that. And they cannot just work on romantic vision of building a new technology. So one of the two partners leaves and the company slowly, slowly just dies. Right? So they're bleeding out. They're all engineering. There are five, seven guys. I mean, this building is sick of the. I mean, that's that's this is NORCAT. This is NORCAT everywhere through, right? This is no different, by the way. It's not just NORCAT. This is everywhere. Every incubator has the exact same situation. There's no one knows how to do this corporate development. I seem to. And the only reason why I learned is because I'm not because I got this training outside the country. This is, we're not, this is why I teach this at universities, by the way, because we're not teaching this to our students. They must learn this. If they're going to compete on the world stage, you've got to play. You got to fight the fight that the good guys win. They feel they have to go to direct and sales. Wrong. You don't want to sell. You do not want to sell. Canadians are terrible salespeople. Terrible, right? And they're not connected to the outside world. Everything's all just within the little Sudbury area or the little Toronto area. Little Toronto area. We're not world class. Let's talk about the investors. 
founders, angels, friends, and family. I'm being very nice to get them seeing between five hundred and seven hundred thousand dollars. That's it's probably max a hundred, hundred and fifty. And then it peters out. Maybe they try and find matching funds from FedNor or from, from NOHFC or God knows. But there, there's no money. There's no money. You think there's VC money in Toronto? You're wrong. You think there's lots of angels in Toronto? Yeah, but you're wrong. It's not about raising money. And why give up 30, 40% of your business in the first place anyways? Go get a friggin' purchase order. Zero dilution. No venture capital. Venture debt players. You want to go get debt? It's the old joke about banks. Banks are there when you don't need them, and banks are never there when you need them, right? Or you gotta securitize by putting your own house on the line. Really stupid call, never ever do that, right? Banks don't care, and there's a little, there's a little bit of R&D money available, shred, IRAP, et cetera, not much. What are we good at? We're good at building tech. We're really good in the early phase, very. We're world-class good. I did spend a lot of time in India. I'll put us toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Indians and the Chinese and the Japanese. We're really freaking good. The difference is they can finish it off and we don't. We die after year two. That's where we fail. Using other people's money is real hard. There's only one way, revenue. You have to beat their engineers to the punch. So you got Coca-Cola, Cherry Coke, Diet Coke, Vanilla Coke, the new Green Coke. It's all brand extensions, right? But it's Coke. So you think you're gonna go take on Coca-Cola? You're out of your friggin' mind. I got a better idea. Let's figure out boysenberry. Let's figure out blueberries. Let's figure out a, a, a flavor and convince Coca-Cola to do blueberry. Sorry, you were saying? Yeah. Are you nodding? Yeah. I thought you were falling asleep. <laughs> right? You're trying to do brand, you're just saying, look, here's your product, here's your, I'm doing something with Tesla right now. Right? I'm not gonna go compete with Tesla. Are you out of your friggin' mind? But I got some really cool software which we can apply to their batteries, which we think we can extend the battery life by 20%. So that car now is not, not goes now 400 kilometers. Now that car is going five, 600 kilometers by simply doing power management software. So I got this great software. We're not gonna screw around with OPG and Hydro One, which is where all the shit came from. Forget the Canadians. Let's take this to Tesla because if they like it, they'll embed it in every friggin' car and we're gonna get royalties. What do you think is going to happen after a short amount of time? They're going to buy your ass. The technology came out of OPG. If you leave it to OPG and Hydro One, you know what's going to happen. It's going to sit in friggin' Ontario with the damn government. What a loserville, right? Beat their engineers to the punch. Extend their, pro extend their product, right? Protect your IP. And as I describe it, living in Moose Jaw sucks, so let's be arms dealer to the planet. We have not demonstrated in this country in the 100 years that we've been able to do this outside of mining and oil and gas to become world-class companies. So the answer is, let's be an arms dealer to the guys that can do it. Play to our strengths. Reality is sales and channel partnering. If you don't use US and, your, and other people's sales channels, you will die. Hiring people to have your own salespeople here is the stupidest thing you could possibly do. It's expensive and you're really kind of shitty at it. By the way, we're all at it. So don't leave it to us. Leave it to the people who are the best in the world. Get real, right? They love Canadian engineers. We're respected, guys. Take it from someone who actually knows what he's talking about. They like us. Play to what they like. Don't pick a fight with the guys. They're not your goddamn enemies. If I had a dollar for everyone, say, oh, you know, I'm competing against so and so. No, you don't, you asshole. They're your potential acquirer. They're a billion dollar company and you're frigging, you're trying to, you're trying to make it on $30,000? You're not in competition. You go and license it to them. You go and do a distribution. You do a joint venture. If they like you, they'll buy you. That's the way the world works. Canadians don't participate in that. They're not your enemy. They're your acquirer. Right? Big guys always prefer to buy than build. Building is a real pain in the ass. It's really difficult, it's really expensive. And the average tenure for a general manager in a big tech company is about two years. So if you come to me and say it's gonna take four years, boss, to go and make something, I could care less about it. It's not gonna, like, I'm not even gonna be in my job. You going to give me something that I can actually do where I can go make myself a bonus? Americans are driven by money, right? Keep talking. Get in, get out. Three years, get the frig in, get the frig out. Once in a while, if they're lucky, there may be some technology that's been hanging around for years and years. But generally, history does not show well for companies in Canada that kind of drag out over five, seven years. They're the painful, walking, cancerous death guys. It's really bad, right? Three to five years. They don't frigging steal. Please learn that. Get over yourself. You're not that wonderful. Excuse my language. 
But if you have something that they like, they'll talk to you. Every time they write checks, right? You got one shot. You go there, you got one shot. If you show that you're arrogant, you show that you want outrageous amounts of money or you're a lunatic, they will kick you out the door and then the next guy's right behind you from a different country. And they're, nature abhors a vacuum. If you're not going to solve the problem, someone else is. We're smart guys. There's lots of smart people in the world. If we were blessed and lucky enough to get there first, first, then you got a shot. But if you start playing this game with, oh, you know, I want 50 million up front and I want this and I want that, they're going to call you so and get out and the guy from China is going to be right behind you. Because that's the guys that do it today. Right? Got one shot. You won't take, don't take on the Americans alone. You fail. If you don't, if you don't do this, someone else is going to solve the problem. That's where we fail. That's where we fail in year three, four, five in every industry. And now let's talk about the last point. Now I have a business been around for five, seven years. I've around five, seven years. I've talked to friggin' everyone. No one gives a shit about my product. They don't care. It's, it's good enough. I, the, the existing product's good enough out there already today. I don't really need yours, right? Here's my advice to you. Shut your company down. Kill it. First thing I learned being a, being a product manager, the hardest thing to do is to shoot a product, right? Why? Because if you shoot the product, then you're hacking off an arm. If you leave it alone, it's going to take, it's going to take your life. You lose your house. You go bankrupt. Really bad things happen. You slowly bleed out. It's better to cut it loose at the beginning and to find out earlier rather than later. Great advice. Process. Get your first reference customer here in Canada. Get the thing off the bench. I don't care. I'm saying 100 to 5,000. I don't care. It's 5,000 dollars. I could care less. Just get something that's off the bench. Somebody says, "I really like this stuff." Doesn't have to be robust. Doesn't have to be reliable. Doesn't have to be scalable. You just have to be able to show it. Put it on the breadboard. I don't care. The original bucket that we showed at Permatex was in a Canadian tire pail. Literally. By the way, that's okay because Permatex sells in a Canadian tire in Canada. We did it on purpose. It was rough. It was dirty. It was flew everywhere. But it showed the efficacy of the product. It didn't have to be finished product, not by any stretch. By any stretch. Do one to two patents per year. Spend three, four thousand dollars a year. Figure out who are the six to eight companies that matter. You start doing your technology integration day one. That could be marketing integration. That's the cherry coke, vanilla coke kind of comment. I got my stuff. I'm doing stuff right now in Peterborough. I got deals going on as we speak right now with Les Nestle, Post, Kellogg's. What's the other one? I'm missing. What's that? Actually, General Mills too, but there was the biggest one. Um, I'm missing one. Oh, PepsiCo, right? They've got an algae product. If they left their own devices, they'd be sitting there painfully just dying in Peterborough, right? Current customer. I take it to Nestle in Switzerland and go, hey, I got this great algae. I think we create new protein cereal bars. So everything's like five, gra five grams of protein, seven grams of protein. I can do 20 grams of protein. I can make it for 20% cheaper, and it doesn't taste like sawdust. Can we talk? Boom. Four hours later, they call back. Three weeks later, they're, they're dispatching a team from Zurich over here to Canada, to Peterborough, to see what the hell you guys have built. And if they like it, here's your PO. No brainer. No brainer, right? I'm doing integration, studying their product, saying, imagine if you will, right? Go after their sales channel. That's what I just described. In parallel, just don't be greedy. Go and talk to the guys. You do two or three of these OEMs, I'm telling you, you'll be gone within three years. I'm on the second last slide, so I'm close. There's some programs available. They're getting better, but they still, but they're all focused on R&D, right? So Shred, R&D, IRAP, R&D. Most of the stuff is helping you on the development side. There's very, very little money, if any money available, what I'm talking about, which is the go-to-market side, right? That's our government. Summary. Summary, oh, see? <laughs> Lots of opportunities. Tons of opportunities, tons of innovation in this country. There really is. But the trick is, the most fundamental lesson is take your innovation, run, don't walk, don't believe any asshole that says, well, we have to go screw this for another six months or two years. Get your 70% product. Not your finished product, your 50% product. Get it to the person that matters. Write a 10 slide PowerPoint. Just reach out to them. Say, I got this great thing. Can we talk? We, I, to prove to you it's not about technology, I was, when I was teaching the class in Winnipeg last year, my, uh, my course, and this lady stuck up her hand, middle-aged lady, and she goes, well, that's great, Albert. You know, you have a, you, people know who you are, and you're big in technology. I don't have a name, and I don't do technology. I said, well, what do you make? She says, I make salsa. She goes, great. I said, I said, is it good salsa? She goes, oh, it's great salsa. 
go, great. I go, tell me about it. She goes, well, it's organic, it's this, it's that. And she says, and you know, we get, and I said, so you selling it to me? Yeah, we're selling it to a few stores across Western Canada. Great. I go, can you, if I asked you to produce 10 times the amount, could you do that? Oh yeah, I could do that if I had the revenue. Sure, if I had a purchase order, for sure I could do that. I said, you ever hear, have you ever hear of, of Whole Foods? They were in Winnipeg. They go, I've never heard of Whole Foods. We're in Eastern Canada, I'm sure we've heard of Whole Foods, right? So I said, well, Whole Foods is the fastest growing chain in the United States, it's organic, and what happens is they're, they're known as Whole Paycheck, right? And when you go in there and you're spending 100 bucks, like walking to Costco, you can't walk out of Costco without dropping a couple hundred bucks, right? He's like, they're, and it's all about organic. I said, have you thought about reaching out to the people in Boston saying, I got this great organic salsa? She said, I never thought about that. She, you know, she's trying to sell like, to Sobeys in Eastern, Western Canada, Safeway, whatever, right? She goes and she listens to me. She contacts me like six months later. She goes, I want to thank you. She says, I reached, I listened to what you said. I figured out who the person, the vice president of marketing or new products were at Whole Foods, you know, and, and, we're, and we're shipping our first cases down to Boston. It's now going to go into the United States stores for the first time. I said, now you've got it. She says, yeah. She says, now I know what to do. She says, now I'm going to go after Piggly Wiggly. I'm going to go after Tops. I'm going to go after Wegmans. I'm going to go after all of them. And, and she's like, yay, she got it. And if she would have left it to her own device, she'd be sitting in and Winnipeg and Brandon. Just that one little thing. She didn't change the product. She didn't have to recertify the product. She didn't do anything any different other than going and talking to someone that mattered. Lots of opportunities. We're not good at scaling. So let the people who know, who already have scaled, take advantage of your product. But let them put their label on it. What do you give it? Who cares what their label says? You're making the money, right? If you don't respect the curve, Three years. If you don't respect that curve, the chance of you being successful after three years is extremely, extremely low. I mean, how many incubated companies, Kyle, over the years have we looked at? They're, once you're in their early stage, it all looks really good. But when someone's sitting in the incubator for five, six years, they're getting, it's kind of having in-laws. They're getting a little stinky in the house after a while, aren't they? Yeah? It's true, right? Lock the IP. If you don't get those partners, American and European partners, I'm telling you, you're not going to scale and you're not going to generate revenue, and you're certainly going to get diluted into oblivion if you ever to try to raise capital. Get real, stay real, stay focused. Pick the three to four to five companies that matter and ignore everyone else, everyone else. And it has a name Canada Inc. at the end of it. Monty Python, for the people who are into Monty Python, run away, run away, because you're wasting your time. And that's the presentation.